Nicholas Mel All right, everyone, and welcome. You made it. It's Friday. It's always the day we like to hear, right? Um, and it's getting towards the end of May. I can't believe it already. It's like right there. June's just around the corner. But um, hey, thanks for making it to the episode of uh, Cyber Social Hub's Hubcast. We got a great episode for you. I'm not going to get into it too much real quick because a couple small things I need to cover uh, really quick. I'm trying to see of everyone that's here. I mean, there's a good chunk of you here. Everybody say hi. And uh, I'm curious if you if this is the first time you have been to the show, um, just drop a comment in there. Uh, tell us where you're from and uh, we'll make sure we say hello. I see Ron. Ron made it. And of course, yes, Ron, you you did get the, the first post. So yes, you uh, you absolutely did. Um, oh, there's another little first time here. I'm going to move this up somewhere else. We'll put it above my head. Nope, I'll figure out another spot for it. There we go. That's that's pretty good right there. Uh, so we'll just leave it there. Anyway, um, good show for you guys. But I wanted to remind you, there's still a, a few days left, right? Megan, there's still a few days left on the trivia. Um, and the trivia, if you're a member of Cyber Social Hub, well, heck, even if you're not a member of Cyber Social Hub, head on over to cybersocialhub.com. It's free to sign up. And right here, you're gonna see, now you can't, if you're using our mobile app, you don't ever see this um, widget right here. Um, you won't see it, the widget. However, it's right there. It's right here, it's trivia, and it is still from back from May the 4th, because this is the one we've been running all of May. It's a mix of digital forensics, OSINT, and um, uh, stuff like that. Uh, along with some Star Wars trivia. So, and if you are the winner, which is the highest points, you get one of these guys. You guys know what these are, the regulars. Um, this is our um, Cyber Social Hub shot glass, right? That um, will be yours. It's fired out of an A10 Warthog. I, 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 I kind of try to shorten it down because I know I mention this every time, uh, but some of you guys are new. This little guy right here. Yeah, this is an actual shell casing. You can see it's been filled in right there. And uh, there you have it right there. But what we are going to talk about today, there we go with that. Um, we are going to be at Techno Security. Uh, I believe my guest is going to be down in Techno Security too. Um, coming up here in uh, a week, two weeks. It's real close now. See, it's, all the days are a blur. I do know today's Friday because we're doing a hubcast. That's the only reason I know what today is. Uh, looking forward to that show. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, we're going to be broadcasting live down there. So if you guys want to find out what's happening down there, I'm going to see if they'll let me take a camera onto the showroom floor, but they normally do not. So don't get your hopes up um, just to keep maintain everybody's privacy and, and whatnot, which I get. And I understand uh, a lot of law enforcement down there, uh, but you guys can uh, can check it out. Um, hey, uh, Obi's uh, from upstate New York. Hey, welcome to the show. Appreciate it. Um, Lendro? I can't, I can barely pronounce like Bob and 
Bill, who's about to come up here, much less uh, <laughs> other names. So I apologize. Yes, Ron. Yes, Megan. We yeah, Megan's a regular here. So welcome, welcome. I'm going to try to, oh, look at this. First time in from Brazil. Great goodness. Okay. So far, you may hold the record for the, the miles distance, but there you go. All right. Without further ado, I'm going to bring, bring on Bill Acock here. Ooh, there's Bill from Verify Laboratory. Bill, welcome to the show. Hey, I appreciate thanks, you taking your time here. today. Great to be here, man. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's always a, a lot of fun. We'll try to make it that way. Ah, heck, we, we know we're going to. Now, you're going to be down at Techno. Is that right? Yes, absolutely. I'll be down there, and I'll be giving a talk um, about the, pr the transition between public sector and private sector. That's going to be my talk. I think I'm talking on Tuesday. Nice. That's always a great, great topic. Um, you know, a lot of a lot of people are trying to figure that out. And um, some of us just were crazy and just took the leap. And I didn't even look where I was jumping. I just jumped and right. <laughs> and luckily, I'm still standing straight up. <laughs> so life's good for now. <laughs> yeah, you know, and we we jump into that coming out of law enforcement. We we just we're not we're not private marketers. We're not business guys. You know, we're cops. We're they don't teach us that stuff. And so when you retire, where do you go? I mean, how do you, how do you do a business? How they don't, they don't teach us that stuff. And so it, it's good to have somebody, you know, I wish I would have had somebody to break that ground for me and help me go through it, you know? And, and so that's what I'm hoping to do with it. That, that's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Because there's always, always somebody that needs some, some guidance out there. That's what we should do is just start a consultancy and help private or public sector convert over. And I, I, you know, just be done with that. Heck with right. this. And, you know, and, and, and it, it's needed. I, we need some more in the private sector. We need those public sector guys in the private sector. There's yeah. definitely, there's, we definitely need it. Yeah, I, I agree. I, and I know that's not what the topic's about. I don't want to stray too far off, but yeah. it, it's, I think you can teach an investigator tech any day of the week. It takes a little while. But teaching a tech person proper investigative process, that's where it gets a little challenging. Uh, at, at least those are, those are my thoughts. Again, I'm biased because obviously I came from public sector over to the private as well. Yeah. Um, we're just funnier people anyway. Let's just face it. We're better looking. Yeah. Oh, I'm just I'm kidding. <laughs> Absolutely. We don't have any hair anymore, uh, but... We have a lot of fun. Well, anyway, Bill, I didn't do a proper introduction because we got off on a, on a tangent right away, which is good. It's it's Friday. We're having fun um, already. Um, tell us, obviously, we now know you were in uh, in the public sector. Um, How did you, what made you make the transition? How did you, know, you do that? When, when I was a detective is when I first got into cell phone forensics and, you know, obviously because cell phones are, are like the, the treasure chest of evidence for an investigator. And, and so, and I realized that early in my, in my uh, career as an investigator. So I, I went out after this stuff and, you know, coming from a small department, I started with the, the free open source stuff and, and finally certified in a Celebrite course and back in like 2011 and that that's what got me into the mobile stuff and so i just jumped into it man it was it was my jam uh i was really interested in it and i became really good at it and so when retirement came up um at 20 years retirement came up and i was thinking do i want to hang out in this uh private sector or do, uh, public sector or do i want to go into the private sector and, you know, after a lot of prayer and a lot of think, thinking about it, I, I just jumped off in private sector. So took my little pension and jumped off in a lab and started Verify Lab. And so here at Verify, all I do is I focus on cell phones. That's, I don't wow. do any computers. I don't do any e-discovery. Uh, everything I do is cell phones. And so, you know, like my dad told me, be good at one thing. And so my one thing is cell phone forensics. And so I, I jump into it. And, and so jumping from the public sector where I got a lot of work, I mean, the work comes to you, right? So I'm doing hundreds of phones a year in the public sector and just taking that experience over to the private sector 
it's just, it was almost seamless. The, the, the rough part was running a business. That's, you don't know anything about running a business. So right. that's the part that I had to learn. The phone part was easy. Yeah. So that's, that's funny you say that because yeah, it, it, it was, it, it's shocking to kind of, um, uh, discover all the hats that you have to wear and put on. It's like, Oh, oh I'm, yeah. uh, I'm apparently the accountant today. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Great. Oh, I'm the tax attorney as well now today. Great. Oh, don't, don't get me into that, man. I, I you know, like the first couple of years, the first couple of years I tried to do my own taxes for a business. It was a disaster. I finally, the smartest thing I did was hire a CPA. Yep. She told me, wow, this is a disaster. <laughs> But the important thing is, can you please fix it for me? Right. That's yeah. it. No, man. She she's an angel. Oh, she's an angel. And it's That's still great. it's still a wreck. I mean, <laughs> you know, a cop trying to run a business. Uh, you know, right. she she keeps me in line and keeps me above board. So that's the good thing. Yeah, I don't know what I'd do without my, my accountant. The, I I guess the biggest shock, and real quick, and we'll get onto the subject, was the yeah. amount of taxes the government takes from a biz, small business. I was like how much am I paying oh, every yeah. month to the government? <laughs> oh, it, it, you know, and my wife still, my wife says, where's all this money going? And I'm telling her, well, I got to pay payroll tax. I got to pay this tax. And uh, yeah, you just don't know. You, as a cop, you don't know. As a person, you don't know. But when, yeah. it, when you become a small business owner, woo, you, you are you know indoctrinated you, in the tax. <laughs> and you feel it. You know, it's different oh, yeah. than looking at your check that you're getting from somebody else and go, oh, yeah, they took this, 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 that's it. But being that person now that pays this, 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 this for every employee, that's oh. like, whoa. <laughs> oh, wow. That, that was, that was an eye opener for sure. And, and, you know, my CPA helped me with that. So, wow. Yeah, for sure. So you have an interesting perspective on, um, mobile fin forensics. Um, you take it to the like top, what I call the elite level of getting data from a phone. Um, and when I was doing mobile forensics, which I haven't worked a case in uh, too many years, I don't even want to say how long it's been, but you know, it wasn't a whole lot of that. It was just getting into the JTAG and stuff had just started, the chip, uh, chip offs have, were just getting popular. Now it's, that's kind of pushed one direction. And now the things that you're talking about um, really, is something that I think, and I, and I know you already think this, but uh, we, we talked briefly about this back in, I think it was April, and it really opened my eyes like, yeah, every examiner should absolutely know how to do these things with repairing a, a, a mobile device, uh, because how, how many of them just sit on a shelf or don't do anything, or the investigator just goes, eh, can't do nothing with it. I tell you, um, it has become, it, it's become a primary skill now in, in mobile forensics, you know, and, and I was in there in the day when we was JTAG and chip off and we didn't have full disk encryption and we didn't have file based encryption. And if you got a phone that had been dropped out of an airplane or found in a river or smashed over a guy's knee to destroy evidence, you were like, ah, no big deal. We'll just do a chip off. And that was it. And, and it was all cool. And, you know, in those classes, they kind of teach you some some minor uh, repair stuff like screen replacement and port replacement. You know, that's where I kind of started getting into the repair stuff was in these chip off and ISP classes. And because like in a JTAG, you had to put the phone back together. And so you had to know how to do that. You didn't know how to take it apart right and put it back together because mm -hmm. it had to work at the end of it. Right. It, it's not a destructive process. But now today you have full disk encryption moreover you have everything's now file-based encryption and so the days of chip off on a cell phone are are gone you just can't do it anymore because you, you end up with a paperweight if you chip off the phone like you, you do cold matter subtraction chip off and you saw that board in half and pull the chip and it's done you you, you, you won't get any data out of it now and so it is imperative for every examiner that does cell phones to know how to get this phone operational because that's where it needs to be. If your phone isn't turning on and thinking that it's a phone, you're not going to get the file based encryption data to decrypt because 
the decryption is at rest. If, if the phone is alive, it thinks it's a phone, then you've got decrypted data. So we've got to get it to that point. And when you get a phone that has been broken in half because the suspect didn't want you to see what's on it, or, you know, in a civil case where you have this horrific crash and this phone is completely demolished and it will never be a phone again. Do we just give up on that? Do we say that this data is not important? Absolutely not. And I saw enough of those cases come in that needed this repair that I didn't feel comfortable giving it back to them saying, you know what, I can't do anything. No, I need to be the guy that says, yes, I can get data off of that no matter how it comes in. And so that led me down the path of studying repair and actually going to repair school. And, you know, uh, forensics, the forensic world and the repair world, they don't touch. And I, I don't know why, but they just don't. And they need each other. This is a marriage that, that needs to happen, especially with file-based encryption now. So if, we're, if we cannot get that phone to turn on, we don't get data. And, and so it's got to turn on. And, and that's where this whole thing started. That's pretty, that's pretty amazing. And it's true. It's true with, with modern phones, you know, it, it's all changed over the years. I mean, I started doing, obviously, um, I'm, I'm not going to age you here on, on live YouTube because, uh, you know, we're, we're going to see each other and I don't want punched coming up here at techno, but <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I started with old flip phones, right. Pulling those things out. And, you know, we worried about little, what were they called? SPF flocks or something like that. Yep. We thought that was yep. the end yep. of the world. SPL. And then we realized we could just, Oh, there's zero, 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 zero. Gotcha. We're in. <laughs> it's like windows 90, yeah. 95 security, right? <laughs> yeah. 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 I, yeah. And, and you know, if the, if the, if your flip phone broke in half, that's no big deal. You just kind of put it back together and, kind of touch them and it'd work again. It, the, the repairs were not as drastic as they are now. Right. And yeah. there wasn't as much jammed into the phone. There's a lot of stuff in there. There's a lot of stuff in there. Um, it's just crazy. Uh, and uh, oh, we got people popping in here saying so. Oh, hey, Rob. Uh, there's yeah. Rob in there. And uh, Rob has, or uh, Ron has a funny thing. He says his cell phone had a, had a rotary dial. <laughs> <laughs> Did that, that'd be fun if they actually made those. That'd be great. I read it. <laughs> I wouldn't maybe, put it maybe later for for another discussion. I've got an 18 year old son that that is dead set on getting a bag phone to work on a 5G network. Really? Does he have a bag phone to use? Oh yeah. Oh man. Okay. I've got tons of I've got tons of that stuff, man. I've, I've okay. got uh, I, I kept a lot of my cell phones. Yeah. So, you know, I had, a, I had a cell phone in my squad car, you know, you plug it in and you, you kind of, you, you heat your head up as you're talking to everybody, that kind of, <laughs> that kind of cell phone. Yeah, I remember those, but, right. but you know, those phones, if they broke that, they were easy to get data off of. But today, I mean, today it's got to work. I mean, you can't get around it anymore. You know, right. we, we could, but we can't now. I mean, all these phones today coming out, file-based encryption, they've got to turn on, they've got to think their phones. And so we have, as examiners, if we get a broken phone, we can't just give up and say, ah, well, this phone's done. We've got to be able to do minor repair. And I have seen in the repair world, I have seen some amazing stuff. These, these people are, are pulling miracles, but it's not every shop. So not every shop is doing these, this miracle work on, on cell phones. It's the elite shops, but it can be done. And once I saw it, I had to I had to tell it to the the forensic world. I've been shouting this from the forensic mountain for a year at least. Yeah, it's and, and what in what I picked up there, you said like minor repair. Now, I've seen obviously in in pre-show, I saw some of the pictures in advance. None of these look like minor yeah. to me. All right. But once you do it, I'm sure it's like, oh, it's just like anything else. You you pick it up and you're like, oh, that's that's not so bad. We're gonna replace this as long as you have. And I should have brought them in here. I have, uh, I have a set of. I got a whole workstation in the other room. Now, granted, it's got a lot of dust on it, but it's got the old visor magnifying glasses oh, because yeah. Oh, the, yeah. these 52 year old eyes aren't uh, aren't seeing a whole lot in, up close anymore. Um, but yeah, those are jeweler loops. I've got a pair of those. Yeah, <laughs> I is, think mine are the static is, ones. Yeah. 
Mine are yeah, the these, this, this stuff is like the size of rice or smaller. The oh, I use that just on. to read a book. So, no. <laughs> <laughs> anymore. Uh, hey, Mo, welcome to the show. <laughs> glad, uh, glad you could make it. <laughs> oh, great. Um, what, what, Bill, what's... What do you see more commonly than anything else? Something that's pretty easy to fix that um, that comes in um, to your lab um, and that you have to make a repair on. So, you know, I think first of all that um, one thing that we need to remember as examiners is these phones are pretty robust. So it may look like this phone is demolished, will never work again, but when you take it apart, right? So you think about what, what, where is really our evidence? Our evidence isn't in the screen. It's not even in the chassis. It's on a chip on the, on the logic board. And, and it's, it's kind of like, where's the evidence in the car when you're searching a car? Well, the, the evidence is not the car. The evidence is inside the glove box. And so same thing with a phone. The car can be completely smashed, but the evidence can still be okay. And so with a phone, it looks like it's bad. Oh, it looks just awful. But when you actually take it apart, when you disassemble it, the board is what's important. And that thing is pretty robust. And so I'll see, I'll see a phone come in that just looks completely obliterated. But if you take it apart, if you separate the screen and, and you take it out of the chassis, you take the, the logic board out of the chassis, the board is, is pristine. Hmm. And I, I think I've got an example of that. Let me, let me show you. It's a, yeah, let me flip over to, uh, to a view that you can share here. Let me see. Yeah, I think you have some uh, some nice uh, some photos because you were showing me some of those things, and I was like, "What you call yeah, a you simple think... repair?" I looked at that, and I'm mean, like, "Oh man." <laughs> yeah. So let me pull this up here. Yeah, it's crazy. Hey, why why Bill's finding uh, his pictures and getting them all set up? If you guys have not liked and subscribed to this channel, why don't you go ahead and do that for me real quick? There's some buttons uh, somewhere, one of the corners down below. Um, it helps our YouTube algorithm uh, to get out there so we can get more exposure out there so we can torture more people into the show and bring them in every Friday, right? Uh, we really appreciate that. Like, subscribe to the channel. And if you want to get notified every time we go live, because we are live at Techno Security, so going to be live a lot um, uh, in two weeks. Um, you can hit the notification, and uh, there you will absolutely get notified. All right, I am going to see if I can do this, Bill. Give me a couple button clicks All right. here. Hey, look at that one button. So, click. so this phone was brought into the lab, and and you know the the agency that brought it in was like, hey, wow, this 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 device is demolished, and you can kind of just see. Oh my gosh! <laughs> wow, I mean, we can't get this phone to turn on. Um, we really need data out of it. We just can't get it to turn on. Now that last so, picture, is that just like molded to someone's rear end? <laughs> yeah. So it looks like, like it, it was, I, I, I can't remember where it was, but I mean, it was, it was in this guy's pocket or something, but you can see the bend. You, you can see the structural oh, bend yeah. here in, and I mean, look at that. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I mean, this phone is like pancake. And, and you're thinking the worst, right? You're thinking, oh my gosh, this phone is, what are we going to do? We got to get evidence off this. What are we going to do with this phone? And just some more pictures of the bend. It, it looks really bad. But when you take the, take the screen off and you start looking at it, that bend is right here. Well, look what's bending, the battery. Oh, yeah. Right? This is the logic board up here. This is the daughter board down here. This is where our evidence is right here. And that board is completely okay. I mean, you can, there's no cracks. There's no, you know, breakage. You know, all the damage is below in the battery. So, you know, here's an example of, wow, this wasn't really as bad as we thought it was. This is the board removed. It's up here now. And so, you know, in this case, I just simply pulled the board out, powered it up. Here it is right here with a, with a, a known good part screen. And this oh, nice. is the bad, this is the bad one. So, you know, in, in this case, this looked like a, a hopeless, a hopeless case. But in reality, because I know, right, I know that if I take it apart, that these boards are pretty, pretty reliably uh, 
structurally good. And I also know that in, in Samsung's, the battery's in the middle and they have split boards, one's the top, one's the bottom. So if the damage is in the middle, I, I know it's going to be okay. I just get the regular, I, I pull the board out and power it up. So um, that's, that's a great example of how this is, it, it looks worse than it actually is. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that one, you know, that one, I, even I was like, oh, okay, that maybe you can do something. But see, I, I wasn't aware. I haven't been inside of a phone forever. It's, it's embarrassing, but that's a good point that if you're dealing with a Samsung, you're dealing with the boards up top and then the daughter board down below. And, and that battery is yeah. pretty pliable, right? Uh, for the most part. Yeah. So if it gets a bend in there, your, your chances of getting a good recovery are, are pretty high. You know, and, and the battery, the battery itself is, is, not needed at all. I mean, it could, in fact, that battery, uh, was starting to bloat up because, mm. um, as the battery bends, the contacts start touching and it starts building gas inside the, the packaging. And so, uh, that, that board was completely bad. That, that battery is completely bad. We're going to throw it away anyway. And, and we didn't need it. So, um, the most important part was the board. And as we saw, the board was, the board was, it wasn't even touched. And so it looks worse than it actually is. So, don't judge it by the cover. Take it apart, look at it, and 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 really get a good triage of, of inside the important stuff. Don't take a look at it on the outside and just rule it out. Now you you've probably had some some pretty bad phones over the years that you've seen. Um, oh yeah. So anything um, from memory that's like was just a horrific phone that you uh, that you were able to recover. Yeah, so let me let me show you one. This oh, is a more pictures, yes. Um, yeah, so this is this is one out of a, a crash. And this is a fatality crash. Mm -hmm. Um this is an iPhone 12 Pro. Nope, that's not it. This is an iPhone 12 Pro and you know, file-based encryption. If we want any data off this phone, we're gonna have to get it to work. It's got to think that it's a phone. So you can see here there's uh, there's damage and, and the damage is elongated. So it's damaged down from top to bottom, not oh, across. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So. So, again, we know. Right. We know that um, the battery's on one side and the board's on the other side. So is this phone as bad as we thought um, as we start? You know, look at the bottom. The bottom is just completely demolished. Um, this really scared the the firm because they're like, "Man, we got to have, we got to have data off this phone." Uh, this is the case. You know, there's still some matter in there. But when you open it up, here's our board right here. There's not a lot of damage. All the damage is down here at the bottom, mm -hmm. and the bend. Right, there, there was a elongated bend. So that bend goes right down the middle and you can kind of see a bend right here in the battery. Oh yeah. Yeah. I see it. So, so again, this board is actually pretty good. And after, after I take the shields off, you can see that this board is, is actually in pretty good shape. So this may not be such a bad extraction now. And this is some close-ups of some of the connections that I'm looking at to make sure there's no bends. It, you know, if we had a bend in here, this is where our CPU is in our NAND memory. So these are the important chips. If we had a bend right here, that might be more of a sustain of damage where we may not get an extraction. Looking right here, there's no damage. And this is where our important stuff is. This is the meat of the phone that we really need to work. So this is after I remove the, the board and the battery, you can kind of see the bend here. Oh yeah. Wow. You know, and, and again, everyone thinks, wow, this, this phone's done. Does. No one's ever gonna, <laughs> I mean, it looks done, doesn't it? I, I don't, it's never going to work as a phone again, but after you pull the board out, the board looks pretty good. Now this is me after I have uh, done my work and I'm ready to do an extraction. Right. I love I love the phone holders. <laughs> Those are great. So I apply I apply powdery, I prompt to boot in there. Look at that. And, and this is all 
this is all that there is. That that's our evidence phone right there. And <laughs> I'm get I'm about to get an extraction off of it. I don't I don't need the entire phone put back together. This is all I need. And and let me kind of point out some of these connections here. So this connection here, uh, this is for the screen. And I, I don't always need a screen, but I needed a screen in this one because there was a pin lock and I needed to get an AFU extraction. So right. uh, I needed a pin with touch. And so uh, this right here is the screen connector and this here's a touch connector. And a as I kind of back up here, these are what we call known good parts. So I have a cache of phone parts that I know work and they include a screen, a port, uh, a power button, and a, uh, a proximity sensor. So then coming back to the board here, here's my screen plugged in. This is my um, port, so I can plug it into Celebrite or whatever tool I'm using. This is my battery. And the reason I'm using a battery is because some phones, not every iPhone, but some phones will boot loop unless you have the, the, the battery attached. So uh, if I was to use a DC power supply, um, I would I would get a boot loop out of this because it doesn't detect a battery. Hmm. And so it's just kind of a it's kind of a weird thing out of Apple. Yeah. And so I have to use a battery. And then up here is my power button. And the reason I have a power button plugged in, I don't always need it, but sometimes the phones require it to boot. And also I may need the power button to help me put it into DFU mode if, if I need to go into that for premium. Right. Yeah. And then right here is a proximity sensor. Now, I need the proximity sensor in order to have the screen turn on. And this is just something that you learn in a school where uh, if I didn't have the proximity sensor, the screen would boot up and then disappear. And the reason it does that is because the, the, the board does not sense a proximity sensor. And so it just turns the phone off. It turns the board off. And so mm -hmm. I need this. And so this is, this is all I need. All this other stuff, I don't need that. And I don't need to put it back in a chassis because I don't need that. That that doesn't require it doesn't require that to be a phone. It just requires these things. And you know, I, I, I thought this was like I thought this was wizardry when I first learned it. I was, you know, because we're all taught you gotta put the phone back together. It's gotta look like a phone in order to do your extraction. And I I was trained that way. Right. And, until I went to this repair school. And when I saw it, it was like, it was wizardry. It opened my eyes to, to, to think that, wow, all I need is this board and a, and a few connections and, and I can get a full file system, full physical, even a checkmate. I can do a checkmate with, with nothing more than a, a power cable and a, and a battery and it's done. Wow. So, you know, seeing things like this, make it, it opens your eyes to the possibilities of, wow, all this time I've been stressing over putting this phone back together the right way when I don't need to do that at all. All I need is the board and a few connections and voila, it works. Right. Now, let me show you one and let me find this one that was even worse than that. Let's see. So uh, this is one that I got in where the... It's a, uh, I forget what iPhone it is, but it, it has, it obviously has some elongated damage right here. Mm -hmm. Now, this is pretty bad because, you know, we know our battery's on this side and our board's on this side, but the bin goes across the phone and it goes across our board and it kind of goes across the board in a bad area because we know that our, we know that our CPU and NAND are in this area. Right. And so this phone came in kind of questionable. And right there, you can see the bin. Ooh, yeah. It's right at the right at the SIM tray, and and you're thinking right away. You're thinking, oh man, this to this phone's toast, right? Any normal lab would look at this and go, wow, this is toast. Probably even FBI Quantico would look at this and go, well, wow, this phone's toast. We can't do anything with it. But doing your due diligence, you open it up, because um, like I tell you, you don't really know until you get in it. And so this is the board when I pulled it out and there's a bend right here. 
And that's <laughs> where that's where our bend in the in the frame was. Mm -hmm. And this is it flipped over, and you can see the bend right there, right? So I take a side picture of it, and there's our bend. This is bad, right? If yeah. if the board does not work, we've got to take some drastic action. This is not dead yet. This is still repairable. This is still recoverable. And right here is a kind of a side view. And you can kind of see a split in the board right here. Yeah. Where there's some separation. Separation is not our friend because the board has to work in order to get this phone to, to think it's a phone. So in this case, what I ended up doing is I thought, well, maybe it's not that bad. And so I get my finger, I put the board on a flat surface, I get my finger and I gently apply pressure right here. And as I'm applying pressure, I straighten that board out and I straighten it enough to where the contacts on the top, right? So as the board separates, these contacts are separated mm -hmm. on the top and these contacts on the bottom are shorted. So if I can get them to stretch out and to think that they're back together long enough to get an extraction, it'll work. And fortunately it did. So just a, <laughs> a little bit of finger pressure down the top and fired it up and, and the thing worked and I didn't have to do a chip swap. So, um, and, and again, you think these things are unrepairable and they're not. And, and let's just take, for example, that that phone with the broken board, um, let's just say we, we pushed on it and it still didn't work. Well, actually, you know, we tried, but we haven't lost anything. The board didn't work anyway. So, I mean, we were getting nothing to begin with. So our attempts at data recovery, our attempts at repair, I mean, we're not hurting anything. We're, we're not, don't think of it as if I mess up, I'm going to lose my job because I destroyed evidence. Well, we weren't getting evidence anyway. So, you know, your repair attempt, let, let's, let's make some attempts. Let's try stuff. Let's try duct tape and, and let's try <laughs> throwing captain tape around stuff. And, and let, let's, let's, let, yeah, let's, let's get creative. And, you know, the, and speaking of creative, that is, you know, as a cop, as a, as a forensic investigator, I, I really, was thinking in a box, right? I stayed within my box. I didn't go outside the box. And in these, in these type of data recovery and these board level repairs, you really got to think out of the box. And that was one thing I learned in my repair school was, wow, you guys, you forensic, you forensic guys, you, you overthink everything. And, and you think in the box and in these repairs, you've really got to think outside the box. And so that's also a key is, thinking outside the box, how am I going to get this thing to work? What can I do to make this thing think that the board is straight and not bent? And so it just, you know, in this case, I just pushed it down and it worked. Um, in an extreme case where you just got, the board has gone through a chipper, mm -hmm. right? You, this board is just completely broke. Um, and it's broke to a point where it, this is needed stuff. Um, the last option that we have in getting this thing to work is called a chip swap. And I, you know, when I came into forensics, um, I was told that a chip swap on an iPhone, impossible. That's, can't do it. That's what I've always been told. Is yeah, it possible? Can't. It is possible? Absolutely. Look it is that. possible. I have done it myself. I've watched people do it. The guy that I learned from taught me, I mean, he did it right in front of me. In fact, I think he's going to be at Techno this year. Really? And the uh, his name is Mark Schaefer. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's with the school that I went to to learn board level repair. And he 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 performs a chip swap. At least he did last year. He may do it this year again. But uh, he performed a chip swap there in the exhibit hall with everybody watching. And the joke was... The joke was, hey, how many beers can we put in Mark uh, while he's doing a chip swap? <laughs> and, and, and he is such a professional. He is so good at it that this guy was sucking down beers and he was still doing it. So wow. it, is, it is possible. But like I said, you know, Kevin, when we were taught, we were taught this was impossible. You can't do right. it. The encryption, all that stuff, yeah. you can't do it. 
And up until recently, I thought that until I saw Mark Schaefer do a chip swap on an iPhone and it blew my mind. That's amazing. And now, who's he made, with? Uh, he's, he's with iPad Rehab. Okay. Yeah. I've seen them at that show yeah, uh, a million with, times. And I've kind of always with, wondered like, why are they here now? It makes perfect sense. <laughs> right. And I, I have been encouraging. So Jessa Jones owns that company and she's the one that taught me my uh, repair techniques. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, I have, I have totally encouraged them. You have got to go to techno. This is, this is the marriage that I've been talking about. This is getting the repair people and the forensic people together because oh, yeah, we need the repair people. And, and if we can't do it ourselves, we need to be able to give it to qualified professionals that can do it. And so, you know, again, I thought it was impossible, but I, I've done it myself. If you're educated, if you know what you're looking for and you know how to do it, it is totally possible. And if you can do it on an iPhone, you can do it on a Samsung. So uh, chip swap is absolutely po possible. It is hard. I mean, I'll tell you, it's hard. It takes a lot of practice. And I have ruined a lot of donor phones <laughs> practicing. Yeah. But it is definitely possible. And um, it is a last option, of course, because uh, it is very dynamic. Uh, there's a lot of heat involved. You could lose a chip. Um, in the process, the chip could crack in the process. Uh, th there's just so many variables there and it is a last resort, but totally possible. And hmm. the, the success rates are very high. Uh, but I mean, but, but not knowing that you think it's impossible. And even with a broken phone, we're never going to get it. Never give up until you're just at your, you've got two chips in your hand and they don't work. That's amazing. Now you you've done some other repairs as well. I think I was talking to you back in when we talked first back in April about you popping onto the show here was you had mentioned that you use some thermal imaging for things as well. Is that right? Can you can you oh, tell yeah, us a little bit about that? Those types of repairs. So in and and I've got a I've got a picture for oh, you to awesome. show you awesome. kind of what that's what we're Love doing it. here. This is great. And if you guys, real quick, while, while Bill's doing that, I see a couple of you guys have some questions here. Um, just put a cue in front of your questions when you have them, uh, a cue and a colon, just like Ron did just a, a few minutes ago. Um, and that way I can easily find those. We'll, we'll make sure we get to those to, uh, to Bill prior to him, uh, him scooting off the show here. And, uh, all right, I'll slip over. So in, in this repair school that I went to, um, it, it taught me about um, how to find what is broken in a phone how to diagnose your phone and find the broken part so you can focus your repair and fix it. And so one of the things we learned is that uh, shorts, short circuits are a main problem with device dysfunction. Something has shorted in the phone. Something is, is touching ground that shouldn't be. And so it is, you're losing voltage because of this short. Now, what I also learned is shorts cause heat. And so if you have a short on your phone, it's going to generate heat. And so I use a thermal camera on my iPhone and I, I apply, I inject power to the phone. And then I look through the, I, I scan the phone with the thermal camera and look for the hot spots. And so in this example, I think this was a Samsung and I'm, it's, I've, I'm showing a short with my voltmeter. And so I inject power and I turn on my thermal camera and I start scanning the phone for the hot spot. And lo and behold, here's a hot spot in the phone. In fact, it is very hot. And so this is where my short is. I have now identified my problem. And you can kind of tell just by the shape of the heat signature that it's a chip that's shorted. Mm. And so now this, and this was actually a power chip that was shorted. And so now I know what to repair. So I go in, I remove this chip and I replace it with a, a functional chip and now I've got a functional phone. So a phone that was dead, that came into my shop that said, hey, this phone's dead. We're not going to get anything off of it. You know, what, what can you show us or what, what can you get for us? A phone that comes in dead is now um, alive again. So um, great example of the tools needed. That Having the right tools is is really, really good. What thermal chemo do I use? I use the heat 
and wait, the Seek Pro, Seek Compact Pro, S-E-E-K, Seek Compact Pro, and it plugs into my iPhone, so it's really? just a little bitty thing. And plugs into your iPhone? Yeah, it plugs into my iPhone, and it has an app that runs on my iPhone, so okay. I inject power, and I, I use I my iPhone to find it. I got to look this it, one up now. Seek. It's, it's, rel it's relatively cheap, and, you know, having the right equipment is is paramount to to the setup of of doing these in lab in lab repairs there's a lot of different series here do you remember, you know which one it is so it's the seek compact pro Seek compact series sorry i'm just digging through here oh look at that little bitty thing i'm not showing it my screen let me show you there i think you're oh hang on i got you muted automatically mute you. There you go. Now you're back oh, on. Talking. There, there you go. That's it. That's it. And it plugs into my plugs into my phone. And really, that is so inexpensive. Oh my gosh. Yeah. My wife's gonna kill you because now you. you yeah. You know, she's gonna say, "Why did you order that?" I said Bill told me I needed one. Well, <laughs> and you know, and you need a you need a, a drone too, and yeah. <laughs> you need a right. you need one of those uh, side by side go kart things. The the ATVs. Oh, I need yeah, one of those yeah. too. Yep, I need all those. So, yep. So I'll just tell her. Hey, Bill. Bill said I need them. Yeah, just just put it on the equipment list. Hey, um, so let's talk about. I, I want to hit on some of the equipment that I have yeah, that, I'm, yeah. that I'm using because, you know, when I first when when I don't know about you when I went to ship off in JTAG school they they gave me some equipment and I thought mm -hmm. wow this is cool stuff and then I learned really quick quick that it was not really quality stuff and if you're not using quality equipment in your repair uh, attempts, mm -hmm. you're, you're handicapping yourself. And so I learned right away again with, with the repair people, I mean, this is their gig. They, they use top dollar stuff and it's a little investment, but it's so worth it because it makes your job that much easier when you have the right equipment. So like the, the soldering, the soldering irons that I use, I use the Hacko FM2, uh, 203 dual port soldering iron. So this soldering set um, has precision heat. It heats up very fast and cools really fast. It has the uh, it has the hot tweezers that are, gosh, you've got to have those, especially when you're doing board level repair uh, on components. These little bitty tweezers mm. are so small that you can heat up a component on one side but not the other. What I wish the, I would have had these. What was the JTAC. model number on that again? I'm going to put these in the show notes underneath. Oh yeah, yeah. So, stands, so it's it. the it's the FM203 dual port. I have a Hacko in the other room, but I don't know what they model. They sell it great is. stuff. It, yeah, they, they have they have great stuff. I would not go any other brand except those, um, be, because they sell quality stuff, and you've yeah. got to have the good stuff. Yeah. So as far as hot air, so hot air is another thing you've got to have. Mm. I use a quick 861 DW. And uh, this this is a high quality hot air gun. Mm -hmm. And I, so I use heat for um, different things. So I can use a low heat to, once I remove the board, I might use low heat to remove tape. Or, you know, like on an iPhone, they have the foam around all the components i'll remove all that stuff so i can look at the components to see what their what their status is um, but it, it removes glue uh, before i do a chip off or a chip swap it removes a lot of the glue stuff and then it gets hot enough to where i can actually remove components and it, it has a it has a very small nozzle so i can really target a, a, a small area on the board without overheating the entire board so now they're interchangeable the hot, different ends for yes. that hot oh, air. oh yeah exactly and it's high quality gear so the the quick hot air and the hacko um soldering machine are absolute must you've got to you've got to have something of this caliber in order to do that the the next piece of equipment i recommend is a parco uh, uh, mic microscope the the stereo microscope and the model that i have is a pa dash 5f dash ifr07 okay this is a point this is a point seven to a four and a half zoom mm -hmm. and 
what it does, and, and maybe Kevin, when you were doing JTAG and ISP, we had those cameras and you had the screen up above you. Oh yeah. So yeah. you were, you were soldering like this. You, you were, you had to work down here, but you're looking up at it. And again, I learned at repair school that this is an unnatural motion. Your brain is really disconnected. Oh, sorry about that. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> so, so your, your brain is disconnected to what you're doing. But with the microscope, you're looking down and it's more natural for you to work like this. I thought that that I thought that was BS. I thought, ah, that's just repair stuff. But until I actually did it. So uh, it takes a little getting used to the, the microscopes. <clears throat> but now uh, the microscopes are a must. You, you've got to when you're working on the phone and you're looking down, it, it, it's all natural motion. And, and your brain connects with your hands a lot easier. So definitely a must on those. The the uh, microscopes are definitely a must. Now, just out of curiosity, because we're going to do some sticker shock on some folks, because uh, I oh, came yeah. from a poor department. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so the screen, that's why I have the big glasses. Right? Mm -hmm. you know, those were those are luxury items for sure. Yeah. What, what, what kind of price range are we looking at for something like so, that? So, you know, so the microscope... Uh, the microscope is probably eight hundred dollars. Oh, that's not, and that's not you know that's not bad. And it's no, cheaper and, than most training, right? And it, it, my microscope came with a, a double boom stand, and you know that's not that's not all that expensive. And you know, I also came from a very small department, and what I did is is I put together a shopping list when I needed it. Mm -hmm. uh, when I was with the department, I put together a shopping list. And I would go out for grants and I would either do a local grant or I would do a federal grant. Federal grants are a little more uh, involved in that you're reporting more uh, of your actions. You have to you have to say, hey, I did this and we spent this much and we're doing this much casework. The local grants are a little easier on compliance. And so I would definitely go out for grants on this. Um, but it is so worth having an in-house repair and and let me get let me give you an example here here's another example of of in-house repair let me see yeah so this is a phone that i got from a this phone i got from a um, established lab and they sent it to me and said, "Hey, we've got we've got this phone. Uh, I sent it to you know, I gave it to my technician, and my technician said it had um, water damage and the chip was dead. Can you verify that?" And so I get it in lab, and this is under the microscope that we're seeing here. Uh -huh. And so right away I see wow, there's a whole chip that's missing right here. These are, this is a BGA section that the chip is completely gone. These are the, these are the balls that the BGA chip would otherwise be on top of. Right. This chip is completely gone. I'm like, wow, where'd that chip go? And then, you know, moving on, I start looking and it, this is, uh, this is uh, uh, flux burn. This is from overheating. Oh yeah. I, I overheating the that. device, I, right? I have done that once or twice. Right. Yeah. Here's, <laughs> yeah. I, I have too. When I was first starting out, man, I've yeah. burned this stuff up. Um, this is, this is a, a component that's floating oh, this yep. is from overheating and too much hot air. So it's too forceful of hot air and, and this unsolders and then floats. Yeah. Here's a, here's a component that's missing here. There's a component that's missing here. Here's some scratches on the board from a tool. These are tool marks. Oh, wow. Here's another component oh, yeah. that's missing. Um, here, right here, and I've got a close-up of this, but this is a this is a tap. So this this is a tap. There should be another yeah. gold circle here. It's <laughs> gone. Here's two more components that are missing. Yeah, because so those I'm, taps are just basically just a solid soldered flat, right? I mean, it's just a, like a exactly. little wafer, right? Okay, it, exactly. So here, right here, this is a complete Molex that's been molted off, that oh, melted oh off. There gosh. should, this is, um, this is, I think this is the touch screen and this is the, the digitizer and this is completely gone. Oh my there goodness. should be, there, this is a Molex. There should be another one over here. This one is completely gone and you can see this has been overheated. It's burned up, you know, um, uh, flux. It's oh. been all burned up, oh, you yeah. know, and this is what his technician did. 
Oh my so goodness. here's another. That's my next question. Flooding. This phone wasn't in a fire, right? This wasn't. I no, mean, this no. Was... This this was this was his guy fixing it. All right. So here's another here's another component that's floating. Here's some scratches here from tool marks. Here's our our Molex that's completely uh -huh. gone. Right. Here's some more burns up here. Uh, floating components again, overheating and too fast to air, too much air pushing it. Here's a component that's missing right here. Um, Let's see, isn't a close-up of the component missing? Here's all the tool marks from the guy scratching the board. Goodness, this was, is, was uh, the good. technician in cahoots with the, the <laughs> right, suspect? Here. Right, with the, like, oh right. So, so this, you know, here's another close-up here. So these are tool marks. This is a floating component. This is a component that's completely gone. Uh -huh. And so this is this is a lab that sent sent it to their technician, which at first they made it sound like this was their technician in house. Here's that port. Here's that tap that's completely gone. Right. Here's two components that are gone. So this is all self-inflicted wounds oh on God. this board. And so that is... this is an example of sending evidence, right? This is evidence, sending uh -huh. evidence to somebody else, outsourcing a, 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 a repair on a phone that's not working. And so the, the, what the repair shop came back and said, and oh, I forgot to mention that after I asked him, hey, this this phone is really messed up. Who did this? And he said, well, I sent it to a shop down the street. And I'm like, oh, OK, there we go. So <laughs> oh, so man. this this predominant lab sent a piece of evidence to the shop down the street to do repairs on it. and the shop down the street made it worse. They they can they did more damage than was actually there to begin with. And so this is a great example of keep it in house because in house, you, you know, who's working on your phone, you know, their level of certification because you sent them to class, you know, they're qualified mm -hmm. to do the work they're doing and you can monitor quality control. You can, you can oversee what they're doing and, if you send it to a shop down the road, you have no control over what they're going to do. And you can tell them all day long, Hey, don't ruin my phone, but really do you have any say over that? You don't. So this evidence is important stuff. I mean, we learn as police officers, evidence is don't let anybody else touch it. This is important stuff. So why would we send a phone to the shop down the road to the high school student that we don't know anything about? We don't know his level of training. We don't know yeah. anything about, about who he is or or what repairs he's done in the past why would we entrust somebody like that to evidence i i think you guys couldn't see my face when you were showing those pictures and explaining it but i didn't have my camera in, in the lower view and but i was i was like oh my gosh i cannot believe this i'm still it's so unbelievable that that modified of a phone and the kid yeah just, now was, luckily so. luckily i was able to get the phone to boot and fire up it, it they had they had fried the uh, gpu so the phone had no screen luckily uh, premium is able to get that without a screen so uh, we were able to get get an extraction off that phone and get it to the court and and save that guy's butt but um you know again why would we entrust that important stuff to somebody that we don't know we don't know anything about their training that there's no excuse for that. We need to be doing that right. stuff ourselves. Exactly. And, and Ron had a good question. I, I put it up early. So I, I made sure mm. I didn't lose it because it was right here on topic. As you were showing those, those, uh, those images, it's like, how do we, how do we know those, those of us that were like new to the repair, mm. um, what pieces are supposed to go where it's like it's like when you take apart the toaster and you like leave a piece off to the side and i'm like oops i forgot to put that one back together that's a, a great question go? that's a great question so what what i did and and it just kind of makes common sense and when i say it you're gonna think oh why didn't i think of that that's exactly what i said when they said it to me so what i do is you, you have a complete board right next to it right mm -hmm. so you have exemplars so if I had an iPhone 7, I would have an exemplar iPhone 7 that I know works, that I bought from eBay that was um, iTunes locked or something. You pay 30 bucks for it. 
and I would have it right next to each other. And you can you can look at your evidence and you can look at the exemplar and compare the two and go, you know what, this one's got a this one's got a component here, but this one doesn't. So that that probably there's this one's missing something. Um, and after you've done this for a while, it's just like anything else. After you've done it for a while, you start to spot, oh wow, there, like that Molex that was completely melted off. I'm like, wow, there's a complete connection here that's gone. And, and luckily, that connection can be replaced when, if you know what you're doing. But again, you've got to go to a school to know what you're doing. Right. What, what, what you don't know is that under hot air, that Molex will, it's plastic, right? It's plastic and metal, mostly plastic. Well, you're putting, you're putting down 200 degrees Celsius, 300 degrees Celsius on top of this piece of plastic. Wow. As yeah. long as you don't, as long as you don't break the tension, the surface tension on that plastic, it will remain in shape. But as soon as you touch it with a tweezer and you break the surface tension, it will dissolve and melt right in front of you. And, and, and that's exactly, I can probably predict that's exactly what happened to this one kid. He's got hot air over the Molex and he bumps it with his tweezer and it just de it de it disintegrates right in front of him. He just takes it off going, nothing here, it just, nothing here to it, see. <laughs> it's just gone. I mean, and it just melts like liquid in front of you. And, and of course, you know, I, I've done it and I know, I know now not to do that. But I, I've done it in school and they tell you in school, they tell you, hey, look, this Molex, don't touch it. And it, along with the rest of the components, too, you're using hot air. The, the hot air is blowing down forcefully. As long as you don't break the surface tension of the solder, that the components are going to stay in place. But as soon as you touch one component and you break the surface tension of the, of the solder, that component's going to go with the breeze. And it's going to hit the next component and the next component, and they're all going to break tension. And then sooner or later, you've got a smooth board because you've blown it all off because they, it just, it was a, it was a catastrophe upon catastrophe. But again, they teach you this in repair school. My, my advice is if this is something that, that, that you want to do, my first, your first step is find a reputable school and go. And, you know, a, a, I was telling you earlier, I had a, I had a very large uh, forensic firm in lab yesterday. Mm -hmm. And uh, this large firm sent their best guy down here because um, they had a phone that was told would never work. And I told them, hey, it will. Just send it to me. Well, they sent it to me and their best guy. And they said, what you're doing, we don't believe you can do. So they videoed it took pictures. The guy was taking pictures the entire time. And I showed him that all you need is an iPhone board, a couple of connections. And just like that picture that I showed earlier of the iPhone 12, right. that's exactly what I did in front of them. And they left believers. And uh, <laughs> that guy is going to a school now. That's awesome. I, I got, I got a phone call from him saying, Hey man, I'm leaving Sunday for a school. <laughs> now, my next question for you is, how do you know what a reputable school is? I mean, if you find a repair school, who knows it's not the school that trained that kid that burnt the mm. crap out of that board you just mm. showed. You know, how do you know that it's reputable? I, I can tell you the, and, and I don't know if I can plug or not, but I mean, the yeah, school, yeah, that, I, please the, do. The school that I went to really is, is Jessa Jones and iPad Rehab. I, iPad and, Rehab. Yeah. Um, Jessa and, and she's a YouTube phenomenon and, you know, she's a rock star in the repair world. Like, um, people will ask me, wow, you know, Jessa Jones, what's she like? I mean, it's kind of like a movie star in the repair world, but in the forensic world, I'm like, who's that? I don't know who that is. I mean, <laughs> right. you don't, you don't watch your videos. I'm like, no, I, I didn't even know she was on video, but, um, she teaches a great school. She has a doctorate. And uh, she was a school teacher beforehand. So she she teaches well and she knows what she's doing. Hmm. And oh, yeah, Rob, Rob's seen her videos before. So she she's an excellent teacher. I recommend that class highly. Now, they only talk about iPhones and they do magic with iPhones. But wow. the same the, the same techniques you use on iPhones, you apply to Androids. Hmm. And uh, I highly recommend that class. And 
if you go to a school and they're not doing board level repair, I would avoid it. I, I would just move on to something else because, mm. you know, like when, when we took our ch uh, chip off and JTAG schools, we, they came in and they taught like screen replacement and port replacement and, and things like that. Avoid those schools, get into the meat, get into the board level repair, the, the component level, I think they call it level three repair, get into that. Those are the schools that you want to get into. And I'll tell you, there's a learning curve. When I went, I was the unicorn in the room because I was in a school with a bunch of repair guys mm -hmm. and I'm the forensic guy. <laughs> and so um, in, in school and the learning curve was this, they speak a different language. So in class, you know, the first thing they say is, well, you know, so today we're going to deal with an error of 2505. And I look at everybody going, what in the world is that? And they're all shaking their heads. Oh, yeah, yeah. An, an error 2305. Yeah, I get that all the time. <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm thinking, what is that? And so they speak a different language. But when it comes down to the actual work on the phone, it all it all makes sense. And and you come away from that school like enlightened, like you like you've been to some Buddhist camp for a year and you come back just completely enlightened and it, t it gives you a whole new view on on how what is possible in forensics yeah that's awesome uh, i i highly recommend it if, if i was still obviously in doing uh, any type of investigation heck i might just do it just for the fun of it anyway because i i miss doing that kind of stuff and now a lot of my stuff is just sitting behind the computer it's not not much fun but uh and you can always go into like private repair if you if you mm -hmm. didn't want to do forensics anymore this would be something where you could you could do private repair and you, know, you can definitely fix family phones and you know your nephew that comes up to you say hey uncle bill my phone fell in the toilet <laughs> you probably never get that do you yeah yeah oh, no I, no no <laughs> I, I get it from the friends right hey <laughs> Hey, Brady's dad, can you fix my phone for me? I dropped it and it's got a cracked screen now. And I'm like, Five yeah, I'm three million dollars. Yeah, I'm three fifty an hour. So. <laughs> right. <laughs> fairly inexpensive. Yeah, fairly well, inexpensive. Well, Bill, thanks so much for your insight. I just looked up the clock and realized, oh, crap, we went overtime. <laughs> oh, wow, got, wow, wow. I got so interested in everything you were showing me. That's amazing. And uh, we're going to have to have you on again. Maybe you can just do a quick hot seat with me when we're down there in, in techno. Um, oh, man. And do another I, quick one down there. I, I'd love it. I'd love it. I love going to techno. I want to see everybody at techno. Yeah. Uh, I, it, I'm a firm. It's going to be great. I, I love I love that show. I've been going to that show for many years. And, uh, and a change in Wilmington. So, yeah, yeah. That's going to be I, a different, keep, different site. Yeah, I keep saying Myrtle Beach just out of habit because it's the first year it's going to be up in Wilmington, North Carolina. Um, so if you get a chance and you guys are going to be there, um, yeah, definitely stop by the booth. We'll have some stuff for you. And Bill, I'm going to have something for you too, that shot glass um, ta -da, that I was showing for the trivia. This is not this yeah. one. Is. This is one that stays on my desk with my grubby fingers around it all the time. But I'll get you a, a fresh one that's wrapped still. And uh, oh, awesome. I appreciate it fact that you coming on the show man um that's if awesome. somebody wants to get a hold of you uh, where where can they go to to reach out to you without hey, a, hey. so a, you have a website so, yeah so my website is uh, www.verifylab.com all right and as you can see back here wait no back here <laughs> it's verify it, it's it's verify with uh two eyes and know why yeah there it is right there we go there is your website hey look techno i saw it go by so uh definitely hit me on emails if and, and yeah we we i'm a chatterbox so if, if i didn't get to the questions definitely uh, send me some emails and uh, I, i'm i'm all about answering questions i'm a team player for sure so uh, anybody with questions or hit me up on discord i'm also on the discord are you on Cyber Social Hub, Bill? Did you have you ever signed up for that? Yeah, yeah, I'm on that. All right. Well, there you go. You can they can message you right there. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. <clears throat> it will send you an email too. So, hey, I, I appreciate you coming on. Um, hey, man, I want to talk more of this stuff. I want to talk like I, I see all this crazy stuff on your website, and I got a million more questions for you. Um, but we're gonna have to do it another time now. Uh, yeah. So again, 
Thank you so much. If you guys have a question for Bill, go to his website. He's, there's a contact button there. Come into Cyber Social Hub um, and uh, you can reach out to him there as well. Uh, so until then, make sure you guys give him a thumbs up um, here on YouTube and that uh, all's good. Like and subscribe to the channel as well. And uh, until we will see you guys next Friday, um, because we do have one more next Friday before we head down uh, to Techno. And uh, we'll see you guys there. Thanks, Bill. I really appreciate it.